Hi, I'm Alan McEachern, Director of the GeoVista Center at Penn State. This GeoVista micro lecture builds on the previous two-part introduction to semiotics. Here, I introduce the concept of dynamic variables. Like visual variables, dynamic variables are attributes of animated sign vehicles that can be varied to depict some variation in the signified referent. In research spanning a couple of years back in the early 1990s, some colleagues and students and I identified six dynamic variables that can potentially be controlled by the display designer. Here, I'll introduce four of these that I now consider to be fundamental building blocks of animated signification. Then, I'll comment briefly on the two others that are more complex. Display date, the first of our variables, is perhaps the most fundamental of the controllable variables of a display. As a designer, you can set the time at which any element of the display appears or fades out or disappears. Use of display date is most obvious for temporal data with real-world dates that you map into the display date. The display dates are usually specified as seconds from the beginning of the animation. This is a nice example from the Digital Atlas of Oregon in which the real-world date of specific conflicts is mapped onto the timeline of the map animation. Duration as a dynamic variable is the time extent from appearance of a sign vehicle or a perceptible change in a sign vehicle until its disappearance or until another change. In the map of Oregon, real-world temporal duration of each era or war could be mapped into display duration so that stars signifying each era or war remain highlighted for a duration proportional to their real-world duration. Thus, if we did this, blue stars for the fur trade would remain for nearly half of the animation, then they would fade out and be followed by a very short duration of brown stars signifying the Cayuse War and then other color stars for the additional wars. This rather schematic example for census tract data in Center County, PA, illustrates the use of display duration to signify a quantity other than time. In this case, census tracts remain highlighted with color for a duration that is proportional to the median annual income in 1990. In addition to controlling when and for how long a signed vehicle will be visible or will maintain a particular appearance, Dynamic display designers can control the order in which multiple reference are signified. In this simple example, census tracts in Center County, PA again, are ranked according to the percentage of residents holding a high school diploma. We start with the highest rank and move toward the lowest rank. In this display, position in the rank is signified by the order in which bright blue is displayed within the track. The rank is also redundantly signified by duration of the light blue that remains in the track as we move on from rank to rank. The longer durations signify the highest rank. Frequency is the number of something per unit time. Any numerical quantity can potentially be mapped into the frequency with which a sign vehicle changes. As we see here in this very simple example of three points blinking at different frequencies to depict low to high data values with slow to fast frequency of blinking. Frequency of visual change, however, can be hard to look at if multiple things change at once at different rates. As we see here in this map in which all of the states above a threshold value for some variable have a high frequency change and those below the threshold have a low frequency change. Thus, Frequency is probably of limited use as a visual dynamic variable, but it can work well in sonic maps in which different frequencies are heard as a user moves from place to place in the map, in the same way that you can imagine a Geiger counter signaling increasing levels of radiation as a person moves from place to place in the real world. In How Maps Work, published back in 1995, I conceptualized both rate of change and synchronization as dynamic variables. But, as several authors have noted, both are more complex concepts than the variables discussed thus far. Rate of change is the difference in magnitude of change per unit time, and synchronization is the sequential correspondence of two or more series. 
Tools can be built that allow map users to manipulate each of these, but neither is really a display primitive in the sense of being independent of other primitives as with our previous four dynamic variables. Rate of change may be easiest to understand in the context of audio depictions rather than video. In that context, it can be operationalized as an envelope within which sound is modulated. The Synthesizer Bootcamp Video Number 3 at the link shown here provides a very nice introduction to this concept. Synchronization is probably most useful not as a primitive variable in a display, but as a kind of display control. An example from an early GeoVista project led by Donna Piquet called Tempest is shown here, in which users could manipulate the alignment of two temporal variables in a search for causal relationships that might have a time lag, in this case relationships between rainfall and fire. This micro lecture provided a quick overview of dynamic variables that can be used to signify characteristics of data on both maps and other information displays. To learn more, check out these three papers available in the GeoVista Center Digital Library. Till next time, this is Alan McEachran of the GeoVista Center at Penn State.